What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about Totally Killer in this video here today. This will be a spoiler free review for Totally Killer, which releases on Prime Video later this week. This is directed by Nanachka Khan, I believe this is how you pronounce this individual's name. It's written by David Miladin, Sasha Pearl Raver, and Jen D'Angelo. Now this is starring Kieran and Shipka, Olivia Holt, Julie Bowen, Randall Park, Liana Liberato and several others. So after Jamie's mother's friends are murdered by the Sweet 16 killer on Halloween, she travels back into time to 1987, where she pairs up with her mom to stop the young would-be killer and get back to her timeline before she's trapped in the past forever. Now, totally killer is most definitely Back to the Future, mixed with all the lovable qualities of Scream while also taking a page out of films like Happy Death Day, Friday the 13th, 80s horror in general, and films like Freaky as well. Yes, The Final Girls is similar to this, but this was certainly more on par with uh, Chris Landon's Happy Death Day movies more specifically that first one the formula has led to a rather heartwarming slasher comedy that fans of the slasher genre like myself should enjoy which i did enjoy this i do like it i say should though because i didn't particularly love the film the way i was hoping i would it's just not a poorly made project either the influence from that films like mean girls had on this project are undeniable and aid in keeping me invested in its story but aspects of it just felt undercooked is all I wish I did love it, but I still liked it for what it was. The writers are delivering a likable protagonist in Jamie, who has an arc reminiscent of Trees and Happy Death Day, minus the mean girl aspects. Over time, she slowly begins to appreciate things in her life, like her mother that she initially is taking for granted. Uh, someone who is very overprotective and for reasons we do find out in the movie. A familiar but still effective way to get your audience to invest in your main lead, like obviously having her go through these challenges with her mother and going through challenges of having somebody in your life who you initially are kind of just taking for granted. And then you over time as the film progresses are learning that you need to start listening to your mother, stuff like that. It's very simple, but still very effective and heartwarming, pulling at all of the emotions for anyone who loves their mother, obviously, <laughs> which I hope most of you do. As well-rounded as Jamie is, the same cannot be said for everyone else who just becomes forgettable or barely stands out despite the solid acting uh, but that bring these roles to life. Kiernan Shipka did a great job, fantastic job, I would say, as Jamie. But there was this one scene where I'm convinced they just decided to use the worst take of her fake crying because it was awful. When you see it, I hope I'm not the only one who thinks that. I just thought that that was the one instance from her performance that was completely awful. Otherwise, Kiernan was very convincing in this role. The most humorous aspect of this film is Jamie's reactions to the 80s culture. Yes, back then, people made jokes that wouldn't be accepted today. So naturally, we get a lot of humor that always landed for me. Probably the screenplay's strongest asset, to be honest, since it's a compelling examination of teens of old versus teens today. Totally killer's pacing sacrifices an opportunity to really dig into Jamie and her mother's relationship, which makes it challenging to fully invest in the obvious riff that exists. Still, Olivia Holt, who plays a younger version of Jamie's mother, was a wonderful addition to the cast. For those of you asking about Liana Liberato, she did an amazing job. Uh, she's part of this group called the Mollies. I think they call themselves that uh, Jamie's mother is a part of, who's also named Pam, by the way. Stop saying Jamie's mother. It's just that Liana Liberato's character, along with the other Mollies, again, like other characters, they are very one dimensional. They get their opportunities to make you laugh, to stand out in that regard, but you don't learn anything really too grand about them like you do about Jamie to really then take a step back and say, hey, you know what? I wanna see what happens to you. What happens to you matters to me. I didn't care. The gore in the film though, and some of the scenes that happened involving stabs and water beds, all of that stuff was very satisfying to see to me, especially with some of the individuals that they were doing it with. Because while some of them were un were one dimensional, most of them were one dimensional. A lot of them were also not very <laughs> likable to me. So I took pleasure in seeing some of them get killed the way that they did. Now, a lot of the mystery aspect was kind of flat and really felt secondary. Despite Jamie taking time to Velma her way out of this situation, the killer reveal was shocking 
cohesive and relevant to the times they were in. Now, I say shocking as someone who actually knew, knew who the killer was going into this, thanks to the draft notes I was sent a few months ago. However, they still managed to dig up something that I didn't see coming. And that was what still made the killer reveal shocking, cohesive, and it also aided in keeping me off the radar of a particular individual because of the fact that I was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Then it came and I was like, ah, that makes sense. So nice job there from the writing department. Screen fans, you should love this. Again, the pacing for the movie, I really think is killing a lot of the aspects because the reveal it's very underwhelming since it's just breezing through allowing allowing almost no time to ingest it all so i was kind of just like oh well while that was cool it's also again one of the more forgettable aspects of the movie i would say this has solid direction i would say it has again solid performances it has a solid screenplay there's just aspects of the direction that are taken away from the film's obvious attempts to have a more heartfelt angle such as the fact that her mother and her the mother daughter rift it's just not going to invest be worth investing in fully for a lot of people when you barely dig into it and that's what totally totally killer's mistake primarily is for me uh, other than that it's a very good movie i would honestly give this a 6.5 out of 10 you guys can let me know what you think about totally killer down in the comment section well some of you might have already seen it if you were at fantastic fest i just had a screener sent to me earlier this past week on like friday or so but let me know again what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video